Hi everyone, hope you are doing well and staying safe and healthy at home. In the current day and age of COVID-19, my household is experiencing a proportional relationship between alcohol consumption and time in quarantine. But instead of talking about the drinking going on at my house, let's travel back in time and learn a little bit about the United States relationship with alcohol use. Originally, alcohol was thought to be something holy and God-given. As you have probably heard, Jesus turned water into wine so it must be beneficial. There are two Bible verses that are used to defend alcohol use. The first is 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4, that says, since everything God created is good, we should not reject any of it, but receive it with thanks. The next is Matthew chapter 15, verse 11, which says, what goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. So the second verse is a little more abstract, but it intends to place emphasis on how alcohol cannot solely ruin someone's character. This is truly dependent on their personal choices. The pilgrims that headed to the New World from England loaded more beer than water onto the Mayflower. This is because it kept better than water, was safer to consume, and provided pain relief. After reaching America, however, settlers had to find a way to make it, as getting it from England was too expensive and took too much time. It took them a while to figure it out, as the types of yeast in America were different than those back home. In fact, establishing a brewery was one of Harvard's first projects. Over time, the colonists discovered how to make a variety of alcoholic beverages, including wine, hard cider, and distilled spirits. Sugar cane grew successfully in the Caribbean, which made molasses. Molasses can be used to make rum, and it was more easily transported to the colonies due to their proximity. Slave labor was crucial for its production in the Caribbean, but eventually New England discovered how to make it from raw molasses. As New England is a seaside area, ships were available for transporting it, there was a substantial workforce to make it, and old wood from ships was used in production stills. This allowed the North to come together to create an industry that made lots of money and enhanced social life. However, to reduce the national debt from the Revolutionary War, Alexander Hamilton, Secretary of the Treasury, enacted a tax on liquor for all of the states in 1791. This sparked a few rebellions across the newly formed United States. In 1794, a mob of around 500 men attacked a tax collector's home, killing two people and injuring more in the process. President Washington ended up calling on the militia to get them to back down, but they were arrested when they refused to pay the tax. Only a few men went to trial and solely two were found guilty of treason. A less violent rebellion also occurred in Kentucky in response to the same excise tax. For eight years, Kentucky managed to avoid paying taxes on liquor. Whiskey was its main cash crop of the state and was crucial to the economy. However, as Kentucky was established a year after the tax was enacted, they did not have people to enforce it and so it was overlooked. When the federal government discovered they had not paid taxes in eight years, distillers were charged with civil debt cases. This was a huge act of passive resistance against Hamilton, which had not previously been accomplished by any groups. The impressiveness of these rebellions is how the perpetrators managed to receive minimal punishments despite pushing strongly against the federal government. They acted upon the widespread disapproval of a tax that disproportionately impacted the lower and middle classes. Moving forward to the 1810s, we see the temperance movement which was supported by a variety of groups, from women to church leaders to politicians. Churches saw this as a way to improve the morality of the Republic. The middle class grew together to support the movement as well, as women relied on their husband's work to provide for their families, and alcohol use and drunkenness reduced the workforce. Scientific data was also utilized to defend the movement, as it coincided with enlightenment. This sketch here is from 1842 and is meant to sway people into believing in the temperance movement. It features two ships, one on the rocks and one at sea. The ship at sea is one of temperance, with small rescue boats retrieving the people who have fallen from the crash ship, symbolizing intemperance. This drawing is called Alcohol Rocks, and the rocks represent alcohol consumption. So you can see this is the temperance ship, and this is the intemperate one. And there's little boats with people on them that are all meant to represent how the temperance movement could rescue people. In speaking with Dr. Strauch a little bit prior to this video um, about the topic of alcohol restriction, she informed me of Maine's role in prohibition in the mid-19th century. In 1851, John Hubbard, the governor of Maine, outlawed the production and sale of alcoholic beverages. This was a mass enforcement of the temperance movement. However, it was repealed and later replaced with the ability for purchase, but solely for medicinal purposes. 
These rules were not completely repealed until 1934, an entire year after the end of national prohibition. Slightly out of the time frame of this class, but still something that intrigued me, was how alcohol was continually regulated by the government. On Christmas Eve, 1926, a man entered a hospital claiming that Santa Claus was chasing him with a baseball bat. This was actually just a vivid hallucination, and the next morning he died from alcohol poisoning. This is because in an attempt to prohibit bootleggers from making alcohol, the US government purposely required higher amounts of methanol be included in industrial alcohol. The bootleggers continued to make it anyway because they were unaware of the change of its contents and it led to the deaths of 10,000 Americans. The purpose of alcohol changed throughout American history. It was originally something religiously supported that bonded society, but was transformed into a way the government could control its people. The government utilized alcohol consumption to make money through taxes and attempted to calm the population through the temperance movement's attraction with churches and the middle class. The government was ultimately unsuccessful in controlling Americans, as rebellion to taxes and rejection of prohibition led to the removal of these limiting acts. Church, 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 